Eye of the Dragon. Ah! And a little visit to the Dragon's Den. You can do some pendants, some bracelets. Uh, let's see if I can show you. Ooh. And these are bookmarks. So those go, like that goes inside the book and that goes down along the spine. A little bit of wire wrapping. And then the very scary ones. Ooh. So fun. Hi everybody. So I thought, I've been having a ball making these uh, dragon eye thingies. So I thought I would, you know, I never made a video on how I do them. So I thought I'd do one up. So I got to start, I got to make my cabochon, make the dragon eyes. And so, and then sometimes I do wire wrapping on them. Sometimes I do uh, polymer clay and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to make this video and show you how I get from nowhere to here. <laughs> here we go. Okay, so if you're working with resin, you should wear gloves. And if you're not in a well-ventilated large room, you should probably wear a respirator. Follow the, uh, whatever the instructions are on your resin, they're all a little bit different. So I've got a couple of molds here. I'm gonna make the, the eyeballs, <laughs> the dragon eyes. And I always have a few extra molds on standby in case I have extra resin, which I usually do. I either have too much or not enough. Um, what I do, is I, um, I've got this tile because I know the tile is flat. It's a large, like I guess 24 by 12 ceramic tile. And I just put some, uh, what do you call it, uh, parchment paper on top. That way, if it's a little bit not quite straight, I can, you know, I can easily move it instead of trying to move my table. And I know I'm getting a nice flat surface. So I'm going to use Magic Resin. I'm using, normally when I do these, I use a deep casting resin just to make sure I don't get any bubbles but I'm out of that so I'm going to use this art resin art and craft epoxy resin magic resin it's just a different type of resin it's a one-to-one -one resin I'm going to use that it's two part so uh, I don't need a whole bunch so I'm just gonna put some in put part A in one cup that's probably enough probably too much so there's part A, <clears throat> that's the resin, and then I need an equal part, an equal amount of part B, so I've got another cup. Just put the other part in. I like to use these cups that have lines on them so that I can see, I can measure it the same. There we go, that looks good. Just one more check, make sure I got equal amounts. And what I'm going to do to help with the bubbles is I've just got this ice cream container, plastic, with hot water, just hot uh, water from the tap. And I'm just going to set that in there. And I'm going to probably leave it for about 20 minutes. That will help with the bubbles, actually. There's hardly any bubbles in there, but this will help and make sure that I don't have very minimal bubbles. So I'm just going to let that sit for about 15 minutes and then we'll do the next step. Okay, it looks pretty good. Hardly any bubbles. Can you see? See that? Looks pretty darn clear. So I think I can go ahead. So I think I'll be able to... I'm going to take it out of the water carefully, dry the cups off. You don't want to get water in the resin. It actually won't ruin it, but it'll cloud. It'll be a bit cloudy if you get water in. So you want to be careful not to do that. So get rid of that. And then I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to pour the resin in. Just add it together here. Save a container. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of resin. Ooh, I got too much again. Okay, so I'm just going to try not to rough it up too much so that I don't add any bubbles. I'm going to stir it slow so I just need to stir this together for about five minutes. Get it nice and mixed. I'm going to stir it slowly so that I don't stir up too many bubbles. So we'll be back in five minutes. 
Okay, I think we're about good now. I just keep stirring it kind of slowly and scraping the sides. I use this um, often to use a, a wooden stick. Plastic is better because uh, apparently wood can um, cause more bubbles, but yeah, it's not bad. Okay, so I think we're good. There's a few bubbles in there, but I'll be able to spritz them out with my alcohol spritz. So I'm just going to go. I've already cleaned my mold with um, some alcohol. I see a few little things in there. Go through and get them out. There we go. They look pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill up the ones that I will want to make, you know, the right shapes. And I'm just going to kind of fill them up. You see, my head's not in the way, is it? <laughs> so, there we go. Just kind of try and fill them up. Yeah, it looks good. I might be able to use this resin more because I don't see any bubbles. That's kind of a neat shape, kind of an almond shape. That works. And this round. Specks in there. Yeah. I was I have sparkles everywhere in my life, so even though I clean things out, I think there's <laughs> sparkles in the air. Oh, I'm gonna get quite a few. I do all different sizes because some pieces I make smaller. This this big uh, those big ones aren't working very well lately. I think the shines come off them, so I'm gonna skip those. I could um, oh, my head's not in the way, is it? No, I could uh, you do them and then once they're done, just put a um, a, a top coat on them, but. I don't know, I might see how much resin I've got left. Hi everybody, Barb here. Tired of trying to figure out what to wear every morning? All uh, your closet's full and nothing to wear? Check out the link uh, in my description for outfit formulas. It's the coolest way to uh, do wardrobe planning. It's kind of like meal planning for your closet. It works great. I loved it. Thank you. Bye for now. That's pretty good. That'll give me quite a few. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit overnight and in the morning they'll be all hardened and then I can show you how I paint them. Okay, I think I'm done most of my messing. <laughs> Ooh, I have to fix that. So um, what I'm going to do now, you don't want to be torching your molds because it will ruin them. I learned the hard way. I didn't believe them and they were right, whoever the heck they are. But you can't be torching your molds. So some of them I overfilled a bit. I'm just going to scoop it out and I drip some purple in there. Ooh. Try and get that out. <coughs> And then I just moved it from there into the other one. Mix it in. <laughs> gotta improvise. Okay, so I've got a bunch of them filled clear. And then I had some leftover resin. Imagine that. And so I mixed some different pigments in. Purples and green and silver. You can see I overfilled some of them. I'll scoop some off. Ooh, cool. So we'll see what those look like tomorrow. So what I'm going to do now is just instead of torching it, I've got a, a bottle of alcohol. I'm just going to give them a little spritz. I don't know if you can see the bubbles all disappearing when you do that. It's so cool. 
I wish I'd learned this before I ruined my molds. <laughs> okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go around with some Q-tips and just clean up a bit where I overfilled. Whoops. Just clean it up a bit. I can also, once it's hardened, I can still trim it in that to clean it up, but I like to try and get the worst of it off ahead of time. So we'll just let that sit overnight and come back tomorrow morning and see what we got. Okay, next morning. So let's see what we got. Woohoo! Okay. Oh, they're great. I was just worried using the different kind of resin that I'd get bubbles, but now we're good. We're good. Oh, there's a few little bubbles, but nothing that's going to cause any trouble. It's clear enough. So that's good. I got lots of them. So I'm going to... I'm going to get my nail polish out and paint those up. Yeah, they're fine. And they, I have to trim a few of them a little bit. I can probably just do that with my little scissors. Oh yeah, gonna be lots of dragon's eyes. And then let's see how these things turned out. I'm kind of excited about these. Ooh. Now these two, these two molds, I think because I've used them so much, they're dull now. So the, when it comes out, it's a bit dull. But what I'll do is I'll just put another coat of resin over top of them. But oh, those are gorgeous. Oh, oh, oh did it? Oh, okay. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> all my jewelry I had outside of my thing, it all blew over. Okay, so, yeah, so those ones I'm going to have to put in a nice shiny coat on it, but these ones are nice. Pretty. Oh, so pretty. Too much green on that one. like those. I'll probably make pot, uh, what do you call it? Pocket. What do you call those? Pocket. What are they called? You know what I mean? Pocket. Hugs. Pocket hugs. <laughs> yeah, those would be nice. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to get painting some dragon's eyes. Okay, so I've got all my cabochons and I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do, i got my nail polishes. I like the metallic-y ones. I think they look the nicest. So, so got all my nail polishes. And what I do, different people do it different ways. And I tried a bunch of different things. A lot of people, they use like black, black nail polish. And they'll put kind of a, a blob on it and then get a toothpick and kind of spread it out to get the, the point. I don't, I don't know, I found that was messy and I couldn't get it nice. So what I got is an eyeliner, just like a $3 eyeliner thing. And I think it works good. It works good. So what I do, what I do is I just kind of, I, I just eyeball it. I look for the middle. You see what I'm doing? Oh, there we go. So kind of eyeball where the middle is. I mean, you can measure and everything. And then I kind of lay it, I'm gonna take my glasses off. I can't see with my glasses on. <laughs> I kind of lay it flat to get a nice point. And just draw it down and then lift it up. And you kind of have to play with it a bit. And then in the middle, I'm just going to kind of fatten it out a bit. I, I find that I've been finding the ones I like most are the ones that are pretty thin, so I don't want to make it too fat. So I just kind of make it a little bit thicker in the middle. You got to play with it a bit. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. We go that looks pretty good if you get a little bit of if it, uh, make a little boo boos come on, come on 
make little boo-boos like there's a tiny little bit there I'll just kind of scrape that off sharpen it up a bit make sure I've got it all filled in yeah it looks good tiny bit there here we go I'll let that dry and you can do like any any shape that you like so again I'm just going to kind of find the middle oh sorry ah, go out of the camera find the middle here we go same thing kind of lay it down a bit get it sharp and lift it up and if you if it doesn't work right if you get it crooked or you're not happy with it just wipe it off if you wipe it off right away comes right off. Make that nice sharp point. Again, I mean you can make it, you can make them as big as you like, but I find I'm gonna show you in a sec there. The I like the ones I like. Ah, okay, I'm gonna have to fix that a bit. Are the ones that are thinner. I think they look more dragonish. So I'm going to skim this down a little bit. You see? It's shaping it a bit. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, almost perfect. Tiny little bit there. There. Beauty. So I will let those dry. Ah, I don't know. A couple hours. I just want to make sure they're good and dry so that um, when I put the nail polish on, it doesn't smear it off. See, here's one for example. See where the eye eyeball is just like a little slit. I like that. I think that's wicked. And then this one, just to give you an idea, it's like a wider one with more scrapey and stuff like that. So I mean, it's still cool. It's just you know a different look. So these are ones I did before, and they're good and dry. So I'm just going to show you. These aren't really big ones, but it'll, you'll get the idea of how I do it. So, I think, and I just play around with the different colors. I think what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna start with a bit of silver in the middle. And everybody does this different, but this is, I don't know, this is, the, this is what I like. So, I'm just gonna put some silver around the outside like that. that and maybe I'll put a little bit around the outside there ah, oh did I spill it no I oh, tell you such a klutz put a little bit of silver around the outside okay that's good I'm just gonna squidgy it a bit and let's get some of this beautiful, I love this color, it's going to run out. I usually end up tipping these bottles over. This is like a teal blue, and I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to squidgy it in. Mix it in a little bit. And let's put some purple around the outside. Got to go get some more colors though. And just kind of blend it in a little bit we'll see what that looks like oh yeah beautiful how can I show you I can't really tip it I'm gonna put more purple around the outside there that should be enough I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and show you really quick <laughs> neat it's it's so easy a lot of people they do that scratchy thing and it's it's nice I don't I don't like it as much I kind of like it like that so but what they do is they get something sharp like a what do you call it a one of these guys of those picky things and they do a bunch of scratches I'll do one with scratch I'm not scratching that one because I love it just the way it is but 
they do kind of scratchy things all the like in a circle like that let's I'll do one with scratchy things let's do this one. Oh no that's one I just uh, well, this is the one that's dry okay so I'm gonna do some gold in the middle okay let's try that and let's see if I can get get an effect with that I'll use this thing so I'm gonna go from the outside in actually I go from the inside out and the outside in what the heck there's no rules there's no rules in painting let's look on the other side and see what it looks like No idea what this is going to look like. Wipe that off a bit. Oh, that's kind of cool. Ooh. Can you see? That's kind of cool. I think I'm going to do some more, though. I'm going to break up that gold a bit. Ooh. Actually, don't mind that. So you see, it looks kind of neat. And then, because I've scratched it, I've got to put some more. I have to put some more, probably black on in behind. So I'll put. Ah, I've dumped these nail polish. So I'm going to put a whole pile of black on the back to fill in any of those scratchy things I made and then we'll let that dry Ooh, that looks kind of cool oh look at that that's perfect I'll do some more of those and I'll let them dry overnight and then we'll come back in the morning and I'll show you how I do the um, uh, polymer clay. That's fun. And these things all turned out good. I made some bracelets. I gotta show you. I made that bracelet last night. With one of the little things I made with my extra resin. Anyway, tally ho! Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's so next morning. I got all my stuff ready. My polymer. I used the Sculpey Primo Premium Oven Baked Clay. It costs about $3.99 at um, Michael's. And I can probably get um, probably get five pendants out of one of these packages. So pretty good. So here's all my guys that I did yesterday. On my eyes. So I gotta I'm gonna pick a couple that I like. Well, they turned out pretty good. I tried a few different things. Nah, not crazy about it. I tried doing a little bit of um, black around the outside with my eyeliner thing. It's all right. I don't love it, <laughs> but I like I like the kind of plainish ones like that. I like that. This one. Probably pick a small one. Oh, that's a nice one. Where's that one? Oh, look at that one. That's different. That's a nice one. I should. I don't do very many ready red colored ones. I only have that one. I don't really like it. Yeah. Maybe I'll. Hmm. Should have done more red. That's got a bit of red in it. And let's see. That's a good size. Okay, so I'm gonna pick. Oh, that's neat. I like them all. Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> I can't pick. Okay, so I gotta settle down and pick a few. Okay, so. And I'm gonna try different colors of my Sculpey. So I'm gonna open these up. 
I have, she says. And it's kind of cut into four different layers there, or four chunks. So I'm going to break off one chunk. And I'm just going to work it. Um, Yvonne, oh, ah, Yvonne Williams, I think her name is. She has a great channel. Um, she's got, she uses a, um, a, uh, what do you call it? Pasta machine to soften her, to work her, uh, her clay. And, uh, oh, I want one, but they're expensive. So I'm doing it the hard way. So you just have to keep working it oh, for about five minutes to soften it up so that you can mold it. I kind of do it that way, fold it over, just keep rolling it. It's a little bit hard on the hands. That's why I would love to get, I've been watching the um, thrift stores and that, and the online, you know, like Facebook Marketplace, see if I can find <laughs> an old, just an old manual pasta machine, and she just keeps winding it through. It looks like fun. It's gotta be a lot easier on your hands too. So I just do this work it get it soft yeah that's pretty good okay so I'm gonna make it into a ball there we go and I'm just gonna use I just use this as a piece of dowel you can use a rolling pin to flatten it out had some mica powder on this and in terms of thickness you don't need it too thick because there'll be a couple layers on you'll see whoops so I don't know what that is maybe a millimeter so first thing I'm going to do I have these tiles they're just ceramic tiles kind of a matte finish Lift that up. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. Yeah, that might be better. Okay. So, I'm just using a little shot glass thing. You know those little dollar store shot glasses? And I'm just going to cut out a circle. Just press that down. There we go. And I'm going to put it on here. Good. And then what I use, I just have some wire. You can use any kind of wire just to make um, a, something to, oops, I forgot my little cutter, to, um, uh, so that you can put it on a chain, you know. Um, there we go. So I just need, a, oh, let's call it three inches and just snip that off. And then what I do is, just kind of bend it to make a loop. Just to make a loop. You see what I'm doing there? I'm just kind of bending it just to make a loop so that you can put a chain in it. Now I'm going to give it a twist. Maybe give it two twists. There we go. And then I kind of bend it down a bit. Just kind of flare it out a bit. And then I press it down into the clay, and that way I've got an instant hooky thing. It doesn't really matter where it, where it goes there. And then usually what I do is I just try to push it. Oops, let me use this. Push it down into the clay. There we go. Then I pick what thing I'm going to use. Hmm, what one do I want? I think I'm going to do this one first. I'm just going to put it in the center. Uh, important thing to do is line up the direction of the, see there's the direction of the pupil. So line it up with, with your um, clasp there. Bail, I guess you call that a bail. I'm going to kind of put it mostly in the center. So see, I want to make sure that it's lined up, <laughs> otherwise <laughs> it will be crooked. And I just put it in and give it a push. We're going to be trapping it on, so and I didn't do that quite perfectly. 
Um, no, I think it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, that's good. Then I'm gonna take go back to the clay, and I need a couple. Of, I need eyelids, so I'm just gonna use the same cup. I'll do one like that. There's one, and I'll do another one. Just kind of semicircles, you know. There we go. And those will be the lids. I usually put the bottom one on first. And you don't want to cover the whole eye, but you want to just... That looks good. Just kind of press that down. And I'll put the top lid on. Can you see? I wonder if I should get it a bit closer. Ooh, there you go. There we go. Ooh, look at the how that comes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Um, you know what? I see. I need to bend this. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. I need to bend that out further because I can see it. So I need to bend that out a bit further. Let's just. Let's just. Get that little line out. Um, here, this is what I need. Just smooth that out a bit. There we go. I'm just going to bend that out a bit so that it doesn't show. guys back on usually I try to flare the top lid up a little bit here we go and I'm just going to press that down go and usually what I do is I roll this up again and I have a, an extruder now you can do I need like some skin long skinny pieces like tubey things so normally what I what I did I picked up an ex, extruder I think you call it Let me see. so you can see there we go um, and it, it works really great. So I just get a little bit, squidgy it down a bit. And you have different size little thingies that you put in. And I think for this one, I'm gonna use a skinny one. You put that in the bottom part. I think that's thick enough. Yeah, that's thick enough. Put that on there. And then put your dough or dough clay in there. And this thing goes in, push it in as far as it'll go. And then you wind the top down. And then you just have to turn it. So it presses down and then you see it coming out. Kind of cool. <laughs> and it, it comes in all different shapes in that. For what I've been doing with this, this is really the only kind I use, just a circle thing. Um, 
get out a fair bit because I'm going to do a little braid around the outside. And then I usually put a little strip around the eyeball. I'm always surprised at how much, like I didn't put that much in, but I'm always surprised at how much you get out of it. <laughs> it's a snake. <laughs> Look at that, look at all that that I'm getting. Ooh. Okay, that's about got it. I think that's all I'm gonna need and then when you're done, let's loosen it off a bit. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna clean it out. So okay, so then I'm going to Take a length of about that long. So that's going to go around. Do that times two. And together, and just do this. See what I'm doing there? Just do this. Roll it kind of opposite ways, and you'll get a nice little braidy thing. There we go. And then I wrap it around. I usually try and make it join at the top. Just kind of push it in a little. Sometimes it unwinds a bit when you're doing that, so I just kind of wind it a bit more. And then I just get my little exacto knife, join it at the top. I'm going to wind that a bit more. Just to try and get the get it kind of even. There we go. Join that up. And I just kind of press it down a little to connect it all. Ooh. Yikes. Nasty guy. There we go. That's what we got so far. <laughs> and then I take another little bit. About twice the width of the eyeball or the eye opening there like that and then what I do is I kind of fold it and do a little pinch here and lay it in the corner of the eye and I just kind of press that in along the lid amazing how they kind of get a personality <laughs> it's creepy and then I'll cut it off here the bottom part just take that out and then I'll leave the top one a little bit sometimes I leave it on all the way this one I don't think I will I'm just gonna just cut it off right there and from here on in you know that you're just playing do whatever you want and just press that down a little bit that just makes it just that much more realistic can you see so it's hard to see kind of because it's all black but and then it's just playtime so a lot of times i'll do like um get these little bits see i still have enough left to make some little things so probably what I'll do with this. The other thing I want to say is that if you don't have an extruder, is you can just uh, make those skinny long things just by rolling it, you know, just rolling it. It's just easier to do the extruder thing. So I think I'm going to make some little like horns on this. So let's do, let's see. some little horns. 
But this is just, you know, play doh play. There we go, I'll do that. Cut the end off. And we'll just stick it right there. Make a few more of those. Probably start with the bigger one and make them a bit smaller. No right or wrong here, just playing. I mean, you know, who's going to tell you your dragon's wrong? <laughs> Says who? And then, I think what I'll do is make, just for fun, put a few little circly guys here. Probably enough. Then what I usually do is I've got just these little um, what do you call them eh, Mandela tools that I got, and I just want to texture. Uh, so usually I start with the bigger one. Just different sizes just to get kind of dragony, scaly type skin look. I think what I'm going to do, this is just a <laughs> screwdriver. I don't know what you call that, Phillips? I don't know, whatever. And I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to, whoops! <laughs> it's one of those magnetic ones. I'm going to do this with that. And it just puts a little design in. And it also presses the thingies down, sticks them on better. I'll do the same thing down here. That's kind of cool. You see what I'm doing? So it just gives a little design in there. So I think I'd like to get a bit more texturing. There's a couple of different size. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like this guy's eye. I'll use a smaller one. Just to get some interest in there. Your little dot, you can do anything you want. Yeah, look at that. It's kind of cool. I think I might like a little curl on them. Sharpen that edge a little bit. This is so fun. It brings me back to playing with Play Doh. That eye is kind of cool. I like it like that. I could put something else there. But I don't think I will. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Then I've just got some old kind of crummy brushes and a bunch of, clean up all my messes here. So that was one little chunk and I still have, you know, a few little pieces left. So and then get rid of all this stuff. And I'm going to do some with some mica powder. So I got these mica powders oh, probably from Amazon. There's all kinds of different colors. Now that eye has got red and gold in there. Hmm. I don't have a good red mica so I'm gonna not even try. I think I'll probably go with mostly gold. So here's my gold. Antique gold. What's that? That says copper. That says bronze. Rustic gold. Let's see what that gold looks like. Yeah I think I like that better. Okay so I'm gonna just put a little bit in the lid. Ooh, too much. Oh well. And I'm just gonna brush it around. I mean, there's, there's people that do like have all, they're all like detailed and stuff like that. I just kind of, oops, 
brush it around brush them around the outside I like to put some kind of color in there not sure which I'm gonna put some color I wish I had a nice vibrant red but I just don't the one I have is kind of peachy in it so let's do I'm gonna do some blue mm, maybe green green would be better aquamarine I wonder what that would look like kind of a let's see what that would look like these are a little bit oh that would be kind of neat oh nice I just kind of dust it around. Ooh, that's a nice color. I'll put a bit more gold here. I'll put a bit of gold right around the lid. So the other thing I want to do too is get the back of the those little horns. Some people wear masks when they do mica powder. Yeah, I probably should. I try not to breathe in too deeply. <laughs> oh, look at that! I love it. Okay, that's good. And then I'm just going to put just for highlight. Oh, I like that. I gotta remember that. Put all that stuff back away. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of silver just to give it a bit of a shine. Just wipe that off on my shirt and <laughs> my painting clothes. There's a little bit of silver highlight there. Just on the edges. some little stones in there yeah 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 so I'm gonna see if I can see if I can find some some nice rhinestones okay I just been digging through all my little stones and I'm I think I'm gonna put some little stones in there this is um, pyrite pyrite from Peru Peru pyrite Ooh, those would be nice too green though it doesn't really go these are so these are just all little stones that I've got up at a oh those are pretty Ooh. Ooh. probably too big though the chunks are too big so I'm just gonna I think I'm gonna put some of these guys in oh they're sparkly and I'm just gonna, let's see, get three that are roughly the same size. Those three guys. I'm just gonna pop them in there just to make it a little bit more interesting. Just stick them right in. Oh yeah. And just push that down in. And that's gonna stay in there once it all bakes. Cool. So now all I gotta do is bake that for about at least 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes at 250. So there it is. Whoops. There it is. <laughs> so I'm gonna bake that for 30 to 40 minutes at about 250. You can use any oven or Probably it's a toaster oven too. And I'm 
First thing I'm going to do, though, really quickly, is going to get a toothpick and just clean the mica powder off the eyeball. I don't think it'll matter, but I just want to make sure. So I'm just going to put a little bit of, ooh, I like that eye. I'm just going to put a little bit of alcohol on the, on my, under my Q-tip. Oops. Yeah. And just wipe off that eyeball. Clean up in there. I might have to push it back down a bit. I don't think it'll, <clears throat> I've never had it kind of stick on the eyeball, but I want to start off with it nice and clean. I'm kind of pushing that, that up a little bit, but then I'll push it back down. Just push that back down. Beauty. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to bake it for about 30 minutes. Let it cool off. And then I can lift it off the tile. And I'm just going to check before I put it in there and make sure everything looks good. Okay, we'll be back. There they are, fresh out of the oven. So now I'm just going to, with my little... Scraper thing. Just going to kind of go underneath, take it off the tile. The tile's still hot. Take it off. And I'm going to let those cool. And then I'm just going to put a quick um, varnish coat on them. And I'll use some like a glaze, maybe triple thick or something, just to, you know, kind of protect them. <laughs> They're getting there. Okay, the last step. So I'm just going to put a bit of a glaze on it. I'm going to use, what's it called? Judykin's Diamond Glaze, water-based dimensional adhesive. Hmm. I just use it as a glaze. Um, <clears throat> I've tried a few different things. You can use uh, triple thick, works okay. I did try resin, it doesn't work. It actually kind of um, separates and it and actually looked kind of cool but it, it didn't give a it didn't seal it it just kind of went into drops and it kind of looks like there's <laughs> water drops on it <laughs> which is kind of cool but it's not what I wanted so I just like to do kind of a a final seal just to you know make it make sure it's waterproof and everything so I just put a little bit on and I spread it around Just to seal it up really good make sure that you know if it does get wet nothing I don't think anything would come off anyway like the mic I don't think anything's gonna happen to it but I just like to give it that extra little touch so just move all that around Woo! it looks cloudy now when you put it on but then it dries nice and clear I just get in all the little nooks and crannies it doesn't take a lot And it dries pretty quick so I'm gonna let that dry and then I will flip it over and do the same on the back just so we get a, a completely good seal there there we go so those are all varnished I went and put some varnish right on the eyeball uh, it's kind of, kind of made it go cloudy so I'll have to see what happens to that I might have to put a tiny coat of resin over top of it. Ooh, I thought, ah, I won't hurt it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there we go. So we're pretty much done. So there they are, the three that I did. Now the, um, I can't remember which one I did in the video. I think it was that guy. I, I'm going to make a separate video to show you how I did the polymer clay on these other two because Otherwise, the video would have been too long, so it'll be part two. This one, I gotta tell you, when I did it, I don't know if you remember in the video, but I, uh, what did I do? There was something, oh, I put a little bit of the varnish over the eyeball, and that was a mistake, because it kind of went cloudy, kind of went yucky. So I, I put some uh, UV resin on, just, you know, to kind of shine it up, 
And I thought, you know what would be cool is to do like a tear. So I let the UV resin run a little bit. Look at that. It looks like he's crying. Anyway, cool.